Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hold on, let me get situated here. Let me see. Let me see. How's it going, guys? Yuki, good to see you. Koala, all the usuals. Vixen, Ganden, Cloud, what's up, everyone? Shin, Obsidian, Yopo, Fishmans, good to see you. Serial, Mont, Swimmer, Bad Humans, of course, what's up? Owl Brother, Proceeder, hello. Let me see. Let me open up my. Um, my thing, my Streamlabs. I for didn't even think of what I was going to type there. Uh, Mont, thank you very much for the seven months. Cheers. Kebabish man. What's up? Squidgy, welcome back. Scrumpty. So, um, yeah, we're, we're finally getting around to uh, Born from a Wish. It'll probably be a pretty short stream uh, today. Um, I meant to get on a little bit earlier so I could do something else. I was thinking about doing Born from a Wish and PT. Um, maybe I'll still have time to do PT after this, but it'll, it might just be Born from a Wish. And then we'll try and do something uh, a bit longer tomorrow. But uh, Born from a Wish is perfect for a short stream because it's a very short little uh, chapter, a short little story. But let me see here. Mont, thank you for that seven. I think that's uh, I think that's everyone. I'm I'll, I'll fit in PT if I can, but we'll 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 see. Hey, what's up, Rico? But yeah, I'll probably do PT sometime soon, either way. Um I'm sure I'll do Silent Hill 3 sometime soon as well. So um yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to it. Uh we'll get to it eventually. Hey, what's up, Corsair? How's it going? Master with the 33 months as well. Thank you. But, um, yeah, Glassy, what's up? Just give me a sec here, guys, and we'll get this show on the road. Hey, what's up, Mr. Busta? Yeah, just give me a sec here. We never did play the opening montage when I played Silent Hill 2. On Halloween night, we never did play the opening montage, so this time we'll uh, we'll do that because it's great. Um, oh, weird! What's up with those alerts? It's like cut off at the top. I'll uh, I'll have to do something about that. That's probably been like that for fucking months without me ever even noticing. Uh, Okami. <laughs> uh, Okami, thank you for the for the five pounds. It looked like it was more on the on the screen there, but that was probably uh, the conversion. Uh, Okami, Okami, I was late thanking your last donation. I think that was when I was playing Silent Hill too. So thank you for that one as well. I don't think you were there when I when I got round to thanking you. Uh, Okami, thank you for the five pounds. I've been watching you for so many years, and your playthroughs never cease to amaze me. Well, that's very high praise. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, man. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, guys, give me a sec here. I'll get this. I'll get this game up. All right, let's let the intro play. I prefer the version of the intro before you've completed the game, where they don't play all the dialogue. Once you have a completed file, they play loads of dialogue during the intro. They don't when you don't have a completed file because they don't want to spoil all that dialogue. 
but I actually prefer the uh, the the clean save version of it. Uh, this is going to be a pretty short stream, Lupus. Yeah. James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything. But you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Yeah! 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 So good! Okay, okay. I always wonder about some of those scenes that we see in the opening montage there. We see a few interesting scenes that we never see in the game, but it's hard to know if those were cut scenes um, or if they were never planned to be in the game, you know? Because Silent Hill 1, I think, has a lot of scenes in the intro that they never intended on showing. In the game to begin with you know things that happen before the game begins where they give us where you know they kind of serve as little puzzle pieces that we can add to the story that we can fill you know that we can use to fill in some of the backstories for the characters and i think this game kind of does that as well to a lesser uh, extent 
Like we see one shot there of Angela running through a house. Um, from the outside, we can see her through the windows running down a hallway. Um, like she looks sort of panicked. And you have to you have to wonder, uh, you know, was that Angela in her home after she killed her father right before she ran away? Like that would certainly make sense. I don't I don't see how it could be any scene in the game that was cut, you know. Um but then there are other l l scenes um like James carrying Maria's body through the prison. You know, that could have been a a cut part of the game that they never included for whatever reason. Early on in the prison, maybe we we were supposed to find Maria dead and then we saw James carry her body somewhere. I could say, you know, I could see that being something that they decided to cut for whatever reason. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. Pretty uh, ominous shot as well. I really like that uh, little scene of James carrying Maria's body and he's just completely silhouetted. Just the shadow covering his entire body. Pretty cool um, little scene. Makes me wish that we got to see it in the game, but who knows, maybe it was never planned. To be in it. Just interesting. Uh, another interesting one is uh, Eddie sitting down beside uh, a white van with Laura beside him. Most people interpret that as being Eddie when he first arrived in town because at the start of the game you see a white van um, right you know near where James parked and it just so happens we see Eddie sitting down beside a white van so maybe Eddie started his journey um, right up there along with James and that was his van, you know, it would, it would make sense. And we know that Laura came in with Eddie. That's how she got into, that's how she made it to the town. So, uh, yes, just some, some interesting stuff to ponder with that opening montage. It's, I should have really played it last time. You know, I forgot that there was interesting things to talk about related to it. But, uh, hey, I, I guess we get the chance to do it now. You know, I was thinking of doing another playthrough of this sometime soon anyway, where we might go for, like, an extra riddle difficulty playthrough and show all of the other endings. Do a playthrough where I try and show all of the optional endings in one sitting. Um, well, maybe not all of them, but, you know, the weird endings, the dog ending, the UFO ending, the rebirth ending. Because um, we could do those easily in one sitting. We couldn't do In Water, Leave, and Maria easily in one sitting. Um, but yeah, we might, we might have to get around to that sometime next um, month or something. Or Well, I don't know. We'll see. It's just been something I've been thinking about. I, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. We still have to do Silent Hill 3, of course. Uh, Storm, hello. And my chat is acting up again. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm missing any questions or anything right now. That's just perfect timing. Uh, hold on a second here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's interesting in that opening scene. Uh, not really, I don't think. Eddie arriving in the town, possibly. The scene with Angela running through the house. The prison scene. Uh, there's a nice long scene of just the like the prison cell, I'm just looking through the bars of the cell, and just the light and the shadows are going all crazy. Kind of reminds me of the scene that we do get in the game with Maria. Um, let's let's uh, let's get into it, shall we? So, new game, sub scenario. Some of you may not have uh, ever seen this before. I think most uh, fans of the series are familiar with it. The sub-scenario, Born from a Wish, which uh, first released with the director's cut. It uh, was not included with the original game. And it centers around Maria, as you'll see. And the title is quite revealing, as you might have already figured out from the main scenario. Maria is not a... Uh, a real person. She's a manifestation born from James's desires. A uh, recreation of his wife, a replacement for his wife. 
Born from a wish. Born from James's wish. And uh, I really like it. I think it's pretty intriguing and mysterious. We're centering a story around a character that isn't real. Just some kind of spiritual creation from the town. Um, we don't really need to worry about difficulty with this. I think I'll just go, go for normal. Let's do it. This additional scenario has been written as a supplement to the main game. We recommend that it be played only after completing the main game. When I woke up, I was all alone. Everyone's gone. Is it because of those monsters? What do I do now? Do I fight and live? Or do those monsters get me? I don't have any reason to go on living. But... But I'm scared to die. I'm so afraid of pain. Should I... run away? I want to find... somebody. I don't like being alone. But is there anyone left alive? And there we go. And by the music, you can tell straight away where we are. Heaven's Night. Because of course, in the main scenario, we saw that Maria had the keys to this place. Heavily implying that she worked here. And I think I can finally get my chat back. Nice poster on the wall there. Hey. Okay, I can see the chat again. How's it going, everyone? Storm, now I can actually see what you're saying. Dave, good to see you. Billy. Yeah, so I missed, like, the entirety of the uh, the chat up until this point. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> if anyone wants to uh, ask something, if they, uh, if they were asking me questions or anything. What's up? Revolver bullets. What are you looking at, Maria? She's looking at something over there. Oh. So there's one interesting thing here. If we look in our inventory. One bullet loaded. Interesting considering what we see during that opening scene. The implication is that Maria was contemplating suicide, which is interesting because I, I think this is, we are literally seeing her moment of birth here. We need to remember Maria is not a real person. I don't think Maria was ever a child. This is her birth. She springs to life inside Heaven's Night and she lists out um, it's almost like uh, she's listing out bullet points in that opening scene, you know, just laying out her feelings and her emotions. Like there's something kind of slightly robotic about it, but not in a bad way. And of course, her feelings mirror a lot of what Mary felt while she was sick. I'm scared to die and I'm so afraid of pain. I want to find somebody, but is there anyone left alive? There's like, you know, there's a lot of Maria. There's a lot of Mary in there. But what I think is pr uh, pretty interesting is that it opens just like the main scenario. 
with our protagonist looking into a mirror. Um, you know, contemplating their life and, you know, the reality of their situation. So we have James opening, facing a mirror in the bathroom, and now we have Maria about to, uh, about to kill herself. Not really sure if she wants to go on living. But we're going to go on living. Let's reload. This gun, we never get a revolver in the main game. Full chamber holds 10 bullets. Definitely more than enough to kill anything that moves. Oh. Hold on, let me just scroll up a bit. But yeah, I've always found this sub-scenario to be really mysterious. It's just so strange. You know, we get to see how one of these Silent Hill manifestations springs to life. You know, we get insight into how they're created, possibly, or just, you know, how they operate. And we'll, we'll be uh, encountering... Uh, we'll be meeting another character later on as well, who's quite strange different to most characters that we meet in the series. What if we try and go back out here? It's locked. Oh, wait. Someone has stuck gum into the lock. I can't open it from this side. Huh, I completely forgot about that. That's kind of unique. Hey, what's up, Pinkaroo? How's it going? But yeah, the interesting thing about Maria is that similar to Lisa yesterday in Silent Hill, she doesn't really seem to know what she is, you know? That's kind of uh, where, the, where the tragedy comes in. A Chinese cleaver. Kind of like a ghost who has, who doesn't realize they've passed away. Except Maria was never, was never a real person. I don't want to leave. Heaven's Night, the name of this establishment. Does it say that when you play as James? I feel like it just says Heaven's Night. Oh yeah, that's another interesting uh, um, little scene in the opening montage. Um, you know, where we see Maria lying down on the stage in Heaven's Night. You kind of have to wonder as well, was that originally a scene? You know, you could have easily imagined that being a scene in the game when they arrive here. Maria wants to stop and rest, and she sort of poses seductively on the on the stage there in front of James. Wonder if that was something that they decided to cut for whatever reason. Okay, let's head out. Dave, are you doing more Darkwood later on, by any chance? <laughs> Always love this shot here. 
coming out of Heaven's Night. I think they use the same angle in uh, Silent Hill 3. Let's walk. Let's really, let's really drag this playthrough out. Try and make it last for two hours. I feel like the, the, uh, the game is slightly foggier when you're playing as Maria. Fog seems really thick. That's well, probably about the same. Don't think this vehicle is here outside the hospital in the main game. Permit perking! Permit perking. Why haven't the mods changed these signs? They changed, like, the, the Brahms, you know, how many miles to Brahms in the opening, but they don't change this. Leave Brahms the way it is and fix the obvious typos. <laughs> Did they fix uh, Brookhaven? Brookhaven says Blookhaven. They did! They fixed Brookhaven. Nice one, mods. I think it's fixed in, in Silent Hill 3, isn't it? Like in the original version of Silent Hill 3, you come back to Brookhaven and I think it's fixed. Hey, that one says parking. Maybe they'll fix the perking uh, eventually. I think you'll see more typos and stuff in the game when it comes to signs and things like that because I don't think the translators worked on um, the in-game signs. I think that was probably just handled by the developers. So it was easier for them to make little mistakes if they weren't translated. Is this side quest good? Um, I, I, it feels weird to be uh, calling it a side quest. I think of it more of as like a, a side story. Like a DLC story. There's a lying figure up on a roof. We see, uh, we don't see any new monsters, unfortunately, playing as Maria. Although that'd be pretty weird if Maria had her own monsters. That wouldn't really make much sense. I mean, like, you could probably argue that it doesn't really make sense that we're seeing James's monsters. But. I guess they had to have some enemies for us to uh, encounter. But I guess you could say since we're a product of James's mind, we're also seeing other things that come from his mind. I mean, you can you could find a way to justify it. Right, Dangor. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can. Uh, I don't. Th I think I don't think you can go too far with it. But yeah, you can probably. You can probably justify it like that. Ooh, we're, uh... We're lagging a little bit at times. Can I go up here? So yeah, we're just... You're just completely lost when you... Enter the town when you come out of Heaven's Night. You have no clues at all on where to go. You just have to look around until you find something. And as is the case, oftentimes with Silent Hill, the blood will lead you to where you need to go.
mannequins. I I do like that, Lufa said. Yeah, no radio when we're playing as Maria, which can catch you out a bit. Some blood on the walls here. Bless us with blood. Bless us with blood. And this is where we need to go. Ooh, I like Maria's uh, strafe. Get the shot and follow it up. Mario's Mario <laughs> Mario I like that Mario and Luigi uh Maria's not Maria's strafe Maria's gyromancy yes correct Mario So here we are. We have cobwebs in the corner. Some abandoned house. Take a look around. Maria's save screen here, very similar to um, James's, just an image of her face, except it isn't blurred in the water like it is with James. Um, where do I want to save? I guess I'll just, yeah, I guess I'll save here. She does look a bit stoned, doesn't she? First aid, some more bullets. The fireplace is boarded off. Do not use is written on it. Hey, I don't suppose the mods have added a feature to look up close at things like you can in Silent Hill 1, have they? That'd be really nice. Just to look at some of these paintings and things up close. Some kind of landscape. Silent Hill 3 has a really nice zoom function as well, yeah. I got a map of the mansion. The living room. We just came from the entrance hall. Yeah, yeah, I knew it wasn't in the game. 
originally Santi. I just thought maybe the mods added it or something. That's why I checked. Interesting uh, little picture here. This will this will become relevant later on. That this red tile and black tile that we see on that picture there. That'll be relevant a little bit later. Oh, it's really nice having these soft shadows compared to before on the PC version where they were like sh so sharp and jagged. Is somebody there? Open up. Hello? Stop it. You're disturbing me. <gasps> Thank God. I finally found somebody. Can you open the door? No. But why? <sighs> Is it really necessary for me to answer all your tedious questions? Yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <sighs> I want to be alone. Other people just irritate me. I just want to see another human face. Do you know what's happening in this town? There's no one here. Just monsters. Yes, I know. But so what? It has nothing to do with me. No one here means there's no one to disturb me. You want to be alone in this insane asylum? Yes, exactly. But how can you say that it's this town that's insane? Perhaps it's we who are insane. Both of us, hopelessly insane. Are you satisfied? Would you leave me alone? My name is Maria. What's your name? Ernest. Hemingway? Baldwin. Ernest, I'll be back. Okay, so there's our first little talk with Ernest. I really love Maria's reaction to him when he says, is it really necessary for me to answer all your tedious questions? And she just goes, yes. <laughs> And his uh, melodramatic line, both of us, hopelessly, you'd say. Are you satisfied? Um, hold on one second, guys. Uh, interesting as well, the, uh, the Ernest, um, she assumes Ernest Hemingway. And uh, Hemingway... Um, committed suicide you know the famous uh, famous author famous poet and from what I remember we find out that something similar happened with um, with this Ernest I think anyway the the implication is that he um, that he uh, that he killed himself. 
Hold on one second. Hemingway was also super agoraphobic. Huh, interesting. What if we try and go back in? Ernest? Are you there? No. I guess not. Actually, I don't think uh, Hemingway was a, was a poet, was he? I think he was mainly uh, just a novelist. I can't say I'm too um, familiar with his work. I'm not much of a reader. Hey, what's up, Wexford? And Mrs. B, how's it going, Pinkery, with the 37 months? Thank you. Hold on, let me open up my uh, Streamlabs again. Some uh, trivia as well for that, about that guy who plays Ernest. That's the guy who says Resident Evil on the menu screens in Resident Evil. I think, I'm not sure if he does it for, in, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if he just does it in Resident Evil 1 or if he does it for, for 2 and 3 as well. But uh, he definitely does it for one of them. I think he might do it for the first few. And hold on, D Miser, thank you very much for the seven months. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little bit late thanking a few of you. Yannick with the thirty-seven, and again Pinkaroo with uh, the thirty-seven. Cheers. Love the music during the earnest scenes as well. So good, so haunting. And eerie. The the music that plays during the final scene of Born from a Wish. Uh, one of my favorite little pieces from Yamaoka, I think. And just along with the scene that plays, it's really, uh, really eerie. Another mannequin in the hallway. Yeah, it's quite unusual not having the, the radio. And we get a white board. He voices the first four REs. Interesting. When the white breath is found, I shall dedicate this thing. O spirit of the mist, grant us fortune eternal. And you might recognize this white bottle from the main game. Um, although you can only see it on NG+, this is one of the items that you collect to uh, get the rebirth ending. To bring, to, to perform a ritual, to bring Mary back to life. So, that's interesting. We're finding something, something related to that rebirth ritual. Interesting as well, considering we're playing as a character who ties heavily into that theme. Mary, reborn. Billy, what's up? Buddy Arts, how's it going? Anonymous with the $5.78. Thanks for streaming, dog. Been enjoying the Silent Hill runs during the dark fall season days. Keep it up and thanks again. Hopefully we'll see you for many years to come. I hope so, Anonymous. Thank you. Cheers. That's very uh, nice of you to say and kind of you. Thank you. It's locked. Weekend at Ernie's. Oh my god. And another one is back straight away. Stop it. You're disturbing me. Locked. Ernest. Are you there? 
No. No. I guess not. Oh, there's another picture of the two boards here. Never the white board. Only the, the, the black and the red. I don't think we ever see a picture of the white one, the one that we just picked up. But these are two more things that we need to find. I wonder if there's any significance in that. Did it come from Ernest's room or downstairs? Ernest, are you there? No, I guess not. You think Ernest might be exploring from his room like in Silent Hill 4? I don't think so. I think he's been locked in this house for a long time. I think this is what we heard, rather than a gunshot. Ernest is a ghost, I think, yeah. For some reason, there's a ladder in the fireplace leading up. John Doe with the $3, thank you. I wasn't going to say it until we, uh, until we got a bit further, but yeah, Ernest is... Um, Ernest is some kind of spirit, some kind of ghost. For some reason, there's a ladder leading up. Along the way, I can see something that looks like a hole. Climb the ladder. Sure. Again, John Doe, thank you very much for the three. Oh, it's okay, Storm. I mean, it's fine. You can talk about whatever you want. Got a red board. What's the name of this area? It doesn't doesn't have a name. Yeah, I know it, it is okay, Storm. There's a square depression in the center of the tombstone. And above that is a carefully carved epitaph. Along with you died joy. All that remains is despair and a future of meaningless tomorrows. But I will never give up. One, to see your beautiful smile again. One, to beg the blessings of the gods. I wait for that day. When the boards cover all, all sadness too will be covered. But until my dreams return to reality, I will have to swallow all that pain, or all the pain. There's a key firmly embedded in the stone beneath the depression. No matter how I try, I can't pull it out. So this is interesting because it obviously speaks to the themes of the game. All about losing somebody. The grief and despair. That is felt when you lose a loved one. But I will never give up. There, there, seem, there seems to be quite a few parallels between Ernest and James. Which we'll, which we'll see more of. When the boards cover all, all sadness too will be covered. The boards are these tablets that we've been picking up, which are all related to the rebirth ending in the original, in the, in the main game. Um, you know, as I was just saying a few minutes ago, the items that you need to collect to, to, to perform the ritual to bring Mary back to life or to attempt to bring her back to life. 
So that's that's kind of what this is getting at as well. It seems all sadness too will be covered. But until my dreams return to reality, I will have to swallow all the pain. So the boards will cover up all the sadness. Which all connect to this idea of bringing someone back to life. A loved one back to life. The blackboard, this is the chalice. When the dark grail is found, I shall dedicate this thing. You who deny death, grant us fortune eternal, is written on the back. And the red board. When the crimson words are found, I shall dedicate this thing. Oh, you gods, deep in slumber, grant us fortune eternal. This is the crimson ceremony book that's writ that's um that's on this tablet which is the, the book that we find at the end of the hotel sequence in the main game. So, and the puzzle here is to cover all this up. Cover this, this green, cover up all this green, this swirling whirlwind of pain and sadness. So to do that, we have to first insert the whiteboard as it is. And the blackboard. And then the red board. But we need to move the red board slightly. Ninety degrees to the right or the left? I think the left for those last two squares. Yeah. All sadness has been covered. When the three boards overlapped, the key came free. I got the acacia key. Kind of interesting, like, is, is this, is Maria evolving as we do all this? You know, just, you just kind of have to wonder about how Maria applies to this. You know, is, is she there to cover, to cover up James's sadness? All this stuff related to rebirth. And to bring someone back to life, because you can't let go of someone who died. Maria is being prepared here to, to meet James so she can serve as Mary's replacement to make James happy again. Go down the ladder. Uncle Lander, what's up? Acacia key engraved with an acacia flower found embedded in a stone slab. Let me just catch up a bit here as well. <laughs> Dave, a swirling whirlwind of pain and sadness. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. This is a depressing day. This is a this is a depressing game, Dave. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I was gonna say this is a depressing Dave game. God, if only I could play this game and be happy if it wasn't for depressing fucking Dave in the chat. Bringing me down. Trying to have a good time here, Dave. Uh, Dave, are you playing more Dave Wood later on? What's up, Knight? Are you going to do another late night shift or what's the plan? All right. So now that we have this Acacia key, let's go back up. Cheek is back. So I don't want to be hollering and making noise. Ah, okay. Okay. Fair enough. 
I mean, that's probably a good thing. You can get your get your schedule back on track. Ernest, are you there? No, I guess not. Still nothing from Ernest. In case your key doesn't unlock that door. I think we came across another locked door. Yeah, over there. I think that's what it opens. Interesting. This hallway. This always reminds me of that shot in the opening montage. You know, where we see Angela running down the hall. The building really reminds me of this. Just the, the, the windows and I think we see the curtains. Kind of similar setup to this. I don't think it's supposed to be this house or anything. It just reminds me of it. Kid's bedroom. And a pack of matches. Well, that's an interesting thing to be finding in a kid's room. Kind of like the uh, the baby carriage in the swimming pool in the main game. Kind of uh, ominous implications there. The shelf is filled with fairy tales and other children's literature. I'm sure I've never read this, but somehow it seems familiar. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Small bed for a child. A doll is sitting on the chair. Now that I look closer, it's filthy. Whoever lived here must have really loved this thing. Stuffed animals line the top of the shelf. Nothing very interesting. Oh, is this a teddy bear? It's not very well made, but it's sort of cute anyway. I bet Laura would love it. She loves bears. Laura? Who am I talking about? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Maria knows about Laura, and that's because she has Mary's memories. She has she has all these experiences. She has memories. She has Mary's experiences and memories, but she doesn't really understand how. You know, it's down there in the in the subconscious or the unconscious. She just doesn't doesn't really understand how she has these memories. But that's why, because she's a recreation of Mary, and Mary loved Laura. Mary um, knew Laura from the hospital. There's either, you know, there's, there's a similar thing going on with Maria's character in the main game. You know, she has all this concern for Laura. She wants she she wants James to go after Laura. We have to find her. And there's even that one scene where she's where she says, I've never even met her, but you know, I just feel sorry for her. That she's all alone. She kind of she feels like she can relate to Laura as well because of um you know how alone she she is. Will you allow FIFA to upload? I don't allow FIFA to do anything. He just he just does his thing. <laughs> but uh, if he wants to upload it, I mean that's fine. I thought Maria came from James, not Mar not Maria came from Mary. That's that's why I'm confused. Yeah, well, I mean, 
she it's it's the town that creates her, right? The town uses James as a catalyst to create this being. You know, the 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 big the, the clue is in the title of the scenario, you know, born from a wish. She's born from James's desires. But, you know, there's there's more to her than that. She's a she's a recreation of Mary with Mary's memories and Mary's you know, Mary's personality, Mary's emotions and all of that. So much of Maria's personality is Mary's personality. Oh, oh no, she fell out the window. Don't move her. What happened? That voice there, that woman's voice, that sounds like Maria's voice actor. I think she's supposed to be playing Ernest's wife. <laughs> I didn't even think about how surprising that might be. People in chat going, wait, what? What the hell? And I'm just chill here. I know, we got, I'm used to it. <laughs> There's a candle here. I was like, oh yeah, that is a little bit surprising, isn't it? If you haven't played this a hundred times. <laughs> I can't see anything. If only I had some light. Well, we see a candle over there. Matches. Only two or three matches are left. Found in kids' room. Kind of an interesting looking uh, design on the matchbox there. Hey, she moved the table as well. There's something below the chair. Is this a birthday card? To my dearest daddy. Happy birthday. From Amy Baldwin. Birthday card and present. A birthday card and unopened present from Amy. There's a wooden box here. There's nothing particularly unusual about it. So yeah, the impression we get from that little scene that, from that uh, bit of audio is that some, uh, is that the daughter fell out a window. Get the impression that some horrible accident happened here and Amy got killed. Give it. To my daddy. Jesus. <laughs> I was waiting for it. It still kind of got me there. I thought it was going to appear in the previous hallway. So Ernest never got this birthday present that Amy prepared. Probably because she fell up in the attic out the window. Did she die on Ernest's birthday? That would have... That's fucking rough if that's what happened. 
And now we can go through here. This is where Ernest was talking to us from here earlier. There's nothing interesting inside or above the fireplace. I love how the fog and trees look here out the window. Just something about it. What do we have here? There's a book here. It looks like a plant encyclopedia. Acacia. That's interesting. We got the acacia key for doing that rebirth puzzle with the, with the tablets. And the acacia key led to that area, to the attic and to Amy's bedroom. A genus of evergreen trees of the mimosa tribe of the pea family. Its tiny flowers are yellow or white and grow in clusters. Common varieties include the gum tree. The acacia tree is a potent symbol in many religions across the world. In Christianity, it represents eternal life and morality. In ancient Egypt, it represented purity and rebirth. While in ancient Babylonia, it was thought of as the tree of the goddess Ishtar and was a symbol of life. It was also a holy tree to the ancient Jews who built the sacred Ark of the Covenant from it and for whom it signified a peaceful death and a release from grief. So pretty relevant. These fucking things. Just spam the X button. There you go. We don't even need to see them. Okay, that's a shortcut that leads back out to the hall. Uh, let's go back. <laughs> that mannequin shadow. Okay. I think this is where we have to go. Of how the fog looks at these dirty windows. Oh, you bitch. Forgot how big this place was. Amruke with the nine months. Thank you. Cheers. So we found our way to the study. Lost memories. I have the strongest trust. You may even call it faith in the miracle called resurrection of the dead. Upon the hill where the light descended. The beast intoned his song. With words of blood, drops of mist, and the vessel of night, the grave become an open field.
The people wept in fear and joy at the reunion, but my faith in the salvation of Zushil Paba did not waver. It is also spoken of in the ancient legends. The original worshippers did not believe that death was the end, but that it was simply the path by which the deceased returned to nature. They also believed the process was reversible. There's something imprinted towards the bottom of the page. Did Ernest write this? What could it mean? Blood equals red, mist equals white, night equals black. Ties in with the with the puzzle that we did to get the acacia key again, the, the three the three tablets. So it seems like Ernest was trying to bring his daughter back to life. I think Ernest has been lingering here for a long time as a ghost, unable to cope with his grief, unable to pass on. Obsess obsessing over this idea of trying to bring his daughter back. a little girl named Amy? Why do you ask me that? This letter. To my dearest daddy. It's from a girl named Amy Baldwin. Your daddy? Yes. Where'd you find that? Up in the attic. Oh. What a fool. Now. It's too late. I finally understand why. <laughs> why she was there. Why she was holding that empty envelope when she... Which she fell. Ernest. Amy. She isn't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I reminded you. No need to apologize. You didn't remind me. I've never forgotten. Maria, some things we forget, and some things we can never forget. It's funny, I'm not sure which one is sadder. It's been ten years, but I still... Ernest, I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, it's, it's fine. Maria, that letter. I'll leave it here. Thanks. <laughs> Maria? So... You must be... That's why... That's why you could see me. Huh? So perhaps that means that I can hope for a miracle as well. What do you mean? In the apartment next door, there's a bottle containing a white liquid. I don't know exactly where it is, but I know it's in there somewhere. I must have it. You... want me to get it for you? Please. Why don't you just get it yourself? 
If I could believe me, I would. But I... White? I'll open the stairway door. Ernest, do you really believe it will work? I don't know. Well, that's okay. I don't mind fighting for an impossible cause. Anyway, it beats just giving up and doing nothing. Maria, thank you. Okay. Love it. Love it. So strange, that one moment when he says, so, so that's why you could see me. What does, you know, what is that about? We are, we never see him. We've been talking to him from, you know, he's been, he's been behind doors each time. He's been locked in a room every time we've spoken to him. We haven't seen him at all. And Maria's response is just like that. She's like, what? When he says that? That's pretty interesting. And then Ernest uh, seems to have a, a, an understanding of what Maria is. You know, he, that's, you know, he, he knows that she is some kind of spirit as well. And it seems like he, he knows why she was created as well. You know, he says, well, you know, if you can see me, then maybe I can hope for a miracle as well. You know, if, if James can bring his wife back to life, um, I think that's how he sees it. You know, he realizes that Maria has been, has been um, summoned to cure someone's grief. So now he can hope for a miracle as well. His sadness can be cured. If, if, you know, he can get a, he can get a, a version of his daughter back. If Maria can exist, if Maria has been brought to life for someone. And, uh, then maybe the same can happen for me. I really like that detail as well. You know, I'll open the door for you. <laughs> I'll open the stairwell door. So this door that has been locked, now it'll be open. Quite spooky, you know? He's moving all around the house and we can't see him. But I, I think the only thing I can think of when it comes to that line about us being able to see him, that it must be, he must just be talking, he must just be talking about the fact that we can talk to him. And, but I don't know, you know, it's, it's very strange. Amy's present to her father, Ernest, found with the birthday card. I think I'll leave this here. Interesting that Ernest never knew about it, how he says, you know, I'm such a fool. Now I know what, you know, what she was doing when she fell. She was, you know, preparing a present. She was preparing a present for her father. And then I guess someone walked up the stairs and spooked her while she was doing that. And she was beside the window and she fell out the window or that's uh, that's what happened, I think. Something along those lines. But it's almost as if if he knew that, that he would have been able to like rest peacefully or something. It was the not knowing that caused him to, you know, to to stay alive as a ghost. Or you know, well, I don't know. You know, he see he sees it as this tragic thing. You know that he. You know, I'm such a fool. Now I, now I know. Almost as if, you know, now when it's too late, I know what she was doing. You think miracles really can happen? This is Silent Hill. Yeah. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, Maria. 
you think too much. I'm from here. This is my town. Forgot about that. That's interesting. Uh, that's the third conversation, Swimmer. We still have to go and get the, the chrism. Hold on, I'm just scrolling up here. Uh, what I don't understand is if Maria is nothing more than a manifestation of James's desire, why is she treated like a real character here like the others? Well, she's speaking to another spirit. She's speaking to a ghost. She isn't speaking. She never speaks to a real person during this, a living human during this scenario. In the main game and in this sub-scenario, we never see her interact with a real living human. Maria's line there feels like it's supposed to be telling as well. You know, I don't mind fighting for an impossible cause. Is that supposed to say something about Maria and her role in the story? I don't know. Kind of an interesting line anyway. Okay. Um, I don't think... Yeah, let's shoot this. Let's shoot this line figure. Hey, okay. Ah, and this leads back out here. Oh, <laughs> we shouldn't be seeing the James screen here. Well, okay, that's uh, that's an issue with the um, with the mod. Oh Jesus, she has the cleaver. Uh, can we reload? I'm using the modded version, the, the enhanced edition fan patch, yeah. Which still uh, has a couple of issues, I guess. Although I don't think mine is fully updated, so... I can't pass through here. It's blocked by a wall. I was referring to the, the, the fan patch storm. Yeah, I wasn't referring to any mods in the chat. <laughs> I think this is where we need to go. Look at that window open up there. I know you know, Storm. I know it's Wexford that's that was making the mistake. Oh no, Wexford was joking as well. Okay. Jesus Christ. Right, I'm just gonna kill all these little cockroach thingamajigs here before I go back and look at that thing on the ground. I'm not the biggest fan of this theme. But once we kill all of the creatures here, we'll get rid of it. 
Come on, where are you? It's up on the fucking ceiling. Where is it? Come down and fight, cockroach. There we go. Oh my god, what a racket. All that all that racket for a few cockroaches. There was something on the ground back here. There's some kind of plate on the floor. Amy Baldwin. She was loved too much by God. Seven years was not enough time. Making me think of uh, Cheryl now. The seven years. Seven year old girl. Okay. So, Ernest opened this door. Keep out of the haunted mansion. Actually, that probably wasn't the door he opened. I think he said he opened the, the entrance to the apartments here. Keep out of Haunted Mansion. Okay, let's see if we can find this white liquid and bring his daughter back to life. Map. I don't think we'll be needing the map. Actually, you know what? Let's pick it up anyway. I don't think they let us explore much of the apartments here. I don't think Ernest can leave the house, so I imagine it would be the door to the house he unlocked. Yes, that's, uh, you might be right, Swimmer. I, uh, I didn't consider that. Although maybe he can leave, you know, it's still his property. Out there. <laughs> so maybe he's, maybe he is able to set foot on his property. But, uh, yeah, I think he specifies in the scene the, uh, what door it is. I just can't remember. Oh, really? <laughs> Mini wheelchairs or rats. Um I don't think they're either. I forget what the uh, what the official name is for those things, but they're they're kind of like cockroach things. Oh, I thought this was uh, I thought this was the place, but it's not. Maria, do you want to stick your uh, hand down the toilet? Disgusting. Uh, 
I can see the apartment next door from the window. Can't cross through though. Daddy Ranch with the 13. Thank you. Come on, Maria. We can kill this thing. How's my health looking? Too bad. Ah, we keep missing it. Let's use the cleaver for a change. Oh! We can read the same note. Dear Tim, I have to run an errand, so I'm going out. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, the liquid is on the bottom floor. Just want to check the rooms here anyway. Just to see if there's anything unique. Oh, we can go out to uh, the uh, the Pyramid Head Arena. This should take me to the alley that runs to the park. But first, I'd better take care of my promise to Ernest. That's kind of cool, the implication that she is going to that park later. Almost as if that seed is in her head already. This should take me to the alley that runs to the park, but first, I'd better take care of my promise to Ernest. Yeah, I forgot about that one clip door. <clears throat> yeah, like it's faded. There it is. The white liquid. On top of the uh, the coin puzzle object. This wardrobe thingamajig. Small bottle filled with an unknown white liquid. The label reads, I deny thee. Deny death. Cool how we see Walter use these same items in Silent Hill 4 as well. You know, actually, let me take another look around here. Did she say anything else about this? Something is written on the desk, but it's too dark to read. Okay. Another save point. Ah! 
Ah, nope. Can't open it. That's actually kind of interesting. You know, usually it'll say the door is locked or the lock is broken, but here it says I can't open it. But there is a reason why. This is the this is where you meet Angela in the main game. And if you come to if you try to open this door before meeting Eddie, um, you won't be able to open it. But it's not because you don't have a key or because the lock is jammed. It says that there's some force that's preventing you from going through the door. So, yeah, we just get, we get something different here when we play as Maria as well. And no mention of a force, just I can't open it. Which is kind of uh, interesting. Oh, wait, no. That's not interesting. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe it says that for a few of the doors where we're, when we're playing as Maria. I thought it was tying into this, to the unique bit of dialogue that you get when you play as James here. Well, that's a shame. Oh. Is is it only these two doors? That would be all that would be kind of weird. I don't think uh because I think when you play as James here, this just has the usual the lock is broken. Why I can't open it? Why? Why do we have locks that are broken, locked doors, and then other doors that we just can't open? Because this is a door with a broken lock when we play as James. I'm almost sure it is anyway. We, we never get this text when we play as James. So I was sure that this strange text related to the unique text that's here when, you're, when you play as James, if you come here before Eddie. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> These really aren't the important questions, but they're interesting when you're a super Silent Hill 2 nerd and you've played the game a hundred times. Okay. Back to Ernest with our white liquid. Was this in every version of the release? Uh, this scenario where we're where we play as Maria? No. That that thing about opening doors? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but um, this thing, this this scenario? No. This this came with the director's cut, which released after the original game. We're, uh, we're at the very end, by the way. This is, it's a short little side story. Okay, we're back. There are books on the desk. None of it looks very interesting. Look, he took the uh, he took the present, the card, and the the gift. It's gone. Lost memories is still here, though. Hmm. 
the grave become an open field. This um, figure here, Zushil Paba, um, in Silent Hill 3, we learn about one of the, the gods of the town that the cult worships, one of the old gods, and its name is Zushil Bara. So I think, uh, I think that it's probably the same deity that's being referenced here, just with a different name. Maybe a mistranslation or just maybe two different names for the same entity, because they do that a few times intentionally in the, in the series. You know, like with Metatron and Metraton. Okay. Bedroom. Thank you, Maria. This music. That's the only item I couldn't get myself. By the time I found out about it, I could no longer leave this house. So long. Yes, but we'll... Maria, the gods are here. You know it too. You were born in this town. I'm not sure God is the right word. Do you believe in fate? Not really. That's fine, then. Ernest, can I open this? This is a dead end. There's nothing beyond here. I know. So, what if I had said I believed in fate? That James, he's a bad man. James. for the you that isn't you. Because he's kind? Do you know something? Yes. Maria, you're... Anyway, that's just what you think. You don't really know anything. That's fine. Okay.
chains. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? My name is Maria. Oh, so good. That final scene, man. I forgot how good it was. That last conversation with Ernest and the music. That Vertigo style shot as well. When we get that close up of her, when she's just standing at the door. So haunting. Yeah, we see that she did take that path to the park as well. From that door that she commented on when we were in the apartment building. Yeah, I said it was going to be a, a short stream today. How about the other ending? <laughs> you mean the ending to the main game? That would take like eight to ten hours? <laughs> Born from a Wish doesn't have another ending. That's the only ending to Born from a Wish. So you must be talking about the main game. This fucking guy in the chat wanted me to do a full playthrough of the main game. <clears throat> I, I did, um, I did, uh, I did the, the main game on, uh, Halloween on October 31st. It's in the VODs if you want to watch my playthrough of the main game. It's, uh, it's there in the VODs. My balls. My balls. No, I'm not going to ruin any great Silent Hill tracks with ball sucking. I'm just not going to do it. I, I could come up with some very good ones, but I'm, I don't want to desecrate these themes, you know? I don't want everyone to be thinking of ball sucking every time they hear one of these classic tracks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Uh, um. Oh, that last scene with Ernest, though. For some reason, that's always been like one of my favorite scenes in the whole series. I've always just found it to be so haunting and just 
atmospheric, the music that plays during it. The long pauses between their, um, you know, with, with, with their back and forth. When he says, you know, that James, he's a bad man. And then Maria, you know, it's like she's processing it and it takes her like a minute to process it. Y yes, I know. <laughs> he's looking for the you that isn't you because he's kind and when he almost spells it out I love that you know when Maria, when Maria is questioning him and he's about to tell her what she is like do you know what's going on he's like yes Maria you're and then, he st then Maria stops him anyway that's just what you think that's just classic, you know, because they, they can't just tell you what, what Maria is, you know, that would ruin the fun. And just so strange, you know, you kind of like that this guy, this earnest, this ghost, that he's the one who sends Maria on her way. It's just very strange, you know, you'd, you'd think it would be that, 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 that it would just be through instinct. You know, if you never played Born From A Wish, you just assumed, well, the, the town created Maria for this purpose. But no, she went through this whole process and it wasn't some grand deity that gave her this mission, you know? It, it was through this relationship that she formed with Ernest. Um, and then eventually he sent her on her way you know it's just really strange and mysterious how how it all happened um, you know it all it makes you it makes it feel like there's some kind of hierarchy in the town like some kind of spiritual hierarchy where you have like these deities and ghosts and you know Ernest knows certain things about how the town works that Maria can't understand you know you kind of get the impression that Ernest is just some pathetic ghost lingering in the in the in his house and that's kind of what he is but you know he's also he knows about James you know he knows after after their first meeting I, again like it's not something that he picks up on straight away only when he talks to her for the second time he's like oh wait that's why you could see me which is still quite strange and mysterious but you know he's he then understands that she was created for someone that she was that she is the recreation of someone who died and now that he he can hope for a miracle as well maybe he can bring his daughter back to life and then we find out that he knows all about james and uh, you know he's he really casts his judgment as well you know he's a bad man He's looking for the you that isn't you. What's that supposed to mean, you know? Who is who is Maria? If not uh, something designed specifically for James's desires, you know? Implying that the Maria that James wants isn't the real Mar isn't who she who she really is. I love it. <laughs> If you want to put it that way, you could say Maria exists because of an external influence, whereas Ernest is a part of the town. Yeah, that's an interesting little conversation we get when we go. If you choose to go back and try and talk to him again, when you can't really do anything after the second time you speak to him, when he says, I am. Um, Oh, what, what is the line he has? Like, I'm, I'm from this town or something, but it feels more like... I feel... I thought it was slightly different to that. Or kind of felt like he was basically saying, you know, I am this town. He didn't just say that, though. He didn't just... He didn't say, I am this town, did he? Something... Something a lot... This is... This is my town. Yeah. That was interesting. This is my town.
But at the same time, I don't get the impression that he is some kind of grand deity or anything. You know, he is this, still is this kind of hopeless ghost trying to bring his daughter back. I don't think he's creating all these manifestations or anything like that. I don't think he has some kind of supreme role within the town, but... Yeah, it's really mysterious. I, I, it, it doesn't take away anything from the main game, I don't think. It just adds a nice extra layer. Creates, creates more mysteries, really, more than anything. I don't think it spoils, you know, how Maria was created or anything like that. I think it just makes her more interesting makes you wonder about all these uh, spiritual elements in the town that you never really learn all that much about. Well, I guess you learn a fair bit, but yeah, you know, they they still keep a lot unsaid. Interesting as well, the, the objects on the table when, he, when she opens the door to Ernest's room. Uh, he opened the present, and there were some black gloves on the table. Was were were the gloves the present? Do you think that's the implication there? The 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 gift box was open, and there were a pair of gloves on the table. I always thought that was weird, um, and it looked like there was some kind of like tube on the table, some kind of rope or something. Is that was that supposed to be a noose? Is that where Ernest hung himself? I guess that would make sense. And Ernest was gone. Those those are the only things on the table. The the pair of gloves, the open gift box, and then some kind of long tube or rope. I don't understand why she said because he's kind. Yeah, that's an interesting line, isn't it? Well, you know, Maria is looking for comfort at the start of the scenario. You know, she's expressing her sadness. She's suicidal. She's afraid of death. She's afraid of being alone. These are all the things she lists out. And a lot of those, I think, are coming from Mary. You know, those are those were Mary's a lot of Mary's feelings while she was while she was in hospital alone, dying. So I think maybe that ties into that. You know, she's looking, she's hoping that James will be someone who's kind, someone who can comfort her. It's that aspect of Mary coming through, I think. And maybe that's part of what Ernest was getting at when he says he's looking for the you that isn't you. You know, is, is, is he saying there he's looking for this seductive, sultry version of Mary? rather than this recreation of sick, needy Mary. And then at the end, when she walks off and we get that scene from the main game, you know, do I look like your girlfriend? We, for the first time in the scenario, we get to see that other version of Maria that we see in the main game, where she's very, um, you know, seductive and um, everything. Interesting how she contemplates suicide at the at the end as well, mirroring the, the start, mirroring the beginning. But then she throws the throws the revolver over the wall. Hopefully Laura didn't uh, didn't pick that up. Sick meaty Mary. I guess she's predisposed to like James. Well, yeah, that's, that's what she's created for. Really interesting as well how Ernest mirrors James as well. You know, he's this grieving 
he, James James didn't die like Ernest did, but they do share a lot in common. Both of them wanting to bring someone back to life, some a loved one that they lost. Um, it's definitely up there, Auriculum. It would be uh, up there in my top five. Seems like the seductive Maria is in her subconscious and seeing James immediately uncovers it and brings it out of her. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because she doesn't really operate like a like a real human, you know? Is the real version of Maria just the, the sick Mary? Like, I kind of see it as if there are three, almost three versions of Maria. There's the, there's the sick... There's the Mary side of Maria. Then there's the seductive side of Maria, which is all relates to what James wants. But then there's the other side, the, the real Maria, who's disconnected from all of her associations to Mary and to James. The part of her that doesn't understand who she is. The part of her that thinks about Laura and doesn't understand how she knows who Laura is. Because there's an aspect of Maria that doesn't fully understand what she is. And that's what makes Maria a tragic character, I think. Because she isn't just this monster, you know? She seems to have her own... She seems to genuinely have her own feelings and be believe that she's a real person. And if she does have those feelings, you know, then what's the difference? She may as well be real. If she still suffers like a real person, you know? <laughs> and we get the... Uh, the James save screen, which we shouldn't be seeing, but there we go. You want to watch a classic trailer? James, honey, did something happen to you after we got separated in that long hallway? Using me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. your Mary. So good. Are you taping again? Come on. Uh, I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. Ah, it's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> hey! 
Hey ho! Two, three, four. different outro. What an amazing game. Those Maria FMVs, man. The detail, the subtleties in her facial expressions. Can never get over it. Do I want to watch another trailer? Probably not. Ooh, Silent Hill 3 TTS trailer? Yeah, let's watch a Silent Hill 3 trailer. Uh, watching that trailer just made me want to play the original game on a um, on a CRT, you know. That's that's still the ultimate way to play Silent Hill Two, I think. Original PS Two CRT TV. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. I can't remember the last time I watched this. A few years. about don't you know your power is needed remember me and your true self as well also that which you must become the one who will lead us to paradise with blood-stained hands <laughs> When am I going to wake up? <laughs> I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> More like a nightmare, I'd say. I love these old trailers. Last one. Sorry I didn't call sooner. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I was. Anyway, I'm coming home now. Oh, I didn't get that thing you asked me to. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will. I love you too, Dad. This bitch and her shaved eyebrows again. What's going on? Where is everybody? Those weird monsters? They have come to witness the beginning. The rebirth of paradise. Despoiled by mankind. Love all the abrupt cuts. It started raining. Are you sleeping? I'm awake. You cold? Hey! One more time! Oh, cool. That's an ominous way to end it. <laughs> That's, uh, you can get that as a game over when you die in Silent Hill 3. Sometimes you'll see Valtiel drag Heather's body off. I think we'll uh, I think we'll leave it there. We'll definitely do Silent Hill 3 sometime soon. Um hopefully with sometime within the next couple of weeks. Um yeah. Sorry it had to be a short stream today, but uh, yeah, that was that was the plan. I was going to do PT, but in the end I just didn't have time. We'll definitely do PT as well sometime soon. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed Born from a Wish, especially if you've never seen it before. I really like it. It's um, it's uh, it's a pretty interesting little side story. So yeah, thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, let me just check my Streamlabs one more time to make sure I'm up to date with everyone. Uh, Xenos, thank you for the 15 months. Levi with the 23. 
uh, Muff Daddy Ranch with the 13 months. Uh, Emruke Genome. I remember thanking all you guys. Um, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Let me just scroll up as well. Hold on here. Was this English voiced with Japanese subtitles in Japan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Have a good one. Peace. Jane.